he entered in there. So actually he had a very foul and repulsive smell. Therefore the other calves were trying to avoid him. <laughs> Sometimes we know how that feels, isn't it? <laughs> Therefore the other calves were avoiding him. Then Krishna Balaram Balaram indicated by eyes to Krishna, this is not one calf, this is one demon. Therefore Krishna, if, if Krishna says in the Gita, of all cheetahs, I am the biggest cheetah. Therefore Krishna came to Bhattasur, oh my dear little brother. <laughs> then whipped him by the legs, spun him round like a centrifuge, and Bhattasur left his body like that. Thank Hare Krishna. Kans was waiting for that he's, he will return back and tell that I have killed Krishna. <coughs> but he never came because he went to that lok from where anyone does not return. Then he told his another associate, Bakasur, go and see what happened of Putana and uh, Trinavart, Saktasur and this. Where they went, they have not returned. And then he went there. How you Bakasu? Agyana Tibrandasya, Janandana Savakaya, Chakshur Urmilitam Yena Tasmae, Sri Guru Venamaha, Vancha Kalpatruvyasya, Kripa Sindhu Vevatya. Patitanam Pavanepyo, Vaishnavepyo, Namo Namaha. First of all, <coughs> I offer my humble obeisances unto my beloved Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa, Pariyurakachari, Ashtatatashi, Srimad Bhakti, Vedanta, Srimadarai, Goswami Maharas. Unto all the Vaishnavas in our Guru Parampara, Tridandi Swamis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, guests, mothers, Sisters and brothers, please accept my humble obeisances. Srila Gurudev ordered me to speak on Pakasur. I read today about several demons, but not about this one. So. <laughs> Caught by surprise. I thought if Gurudev asked me to speak about uh, Dena Kasur, that is my favorite. But anyhow, Bakasur, with the help of Rastananda Prabhu and Giri Maharaj, I got some information. There was a, Bakasur was also sent by Kamsha, brother of Putana. Also, Agasur, brother of Putana, Putana, yeah. Brother of Putana and Agasur, Bakasur, yeah. So Bakasur, he was coming to Vrindavan to catch Krishna. And he was posing himself. Yeah. He was presenting himself as a crane. Yeah. We see often the, tra the cranes in the water. And some of them, they stand on one leg. Yeah. And they seem to be very renounced. Yeah. Very motionless. Watching on the water. Or thinking as if they are, posing as if they are great saintly persons who are completely in trance. But as soon as the baka or the crane sees a fish, he goes and catches it. So this is, according to our acharyas, this represents the false renunciant who poses himself as a great sage, saintly person. But as soon as he sees something, that he wants to catch for his enjoyment, he at once catches it. A false, saintly person. So what happened? Krishna came along the bank of Yamuna, and Bakasur was standing there with big, big beaks. And he opened his beaks, and he catch Krishna. And Krishna go inside, and he take the two beaks of the Baka and he bifurcated his beaks at once. Yeah, and Bakasur left his body. 
and attained the uh, liberation. Yeah. After that, the next demon, <laughs> if I the next speaker. So thank you very much for listening and thank you Guru Dev for giving me the opportunity. Vaishya Kaupadur Pyo Sakri Pasin Guru Dev Vajya Patita Nam Tavane Pyo Vaishya Ved Pyo Namo Namaha. Vakasur is symbol of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy? Kapadukha. If you are doing bhajan, but you want to cheat Krishna and other devotees, like Anna Bhilasa, for any worldly benefit, doing bhajan, Krishna will know. There are so many other hypocrisy. So Krishna will know. So we should be sincere. Nobody any desire. No mayabad gyan, no smart karma, and thus by all our senses and modes we should serve Krishna to please Krishna for the benefit of Krishna. Now, brother of Putana, younger, and also Bakasu. He saw that, oh, my dear sister and my dear brother, they have been killed. Anyhow, I will kill them both, and then I will take the revenge. So what became? Jnana Tamanandasya Gyananjana Savakaya Chakshura Militam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Offer my unlimited respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru Nityalila Pravishtam Vishnu Pad Astotara Satashi Shiman Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and unto my Shiksha Guru our beloved Srila Gurudev, and to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, especially with the idea that you'll go a little bit easy on me. I'm not used to getting up and trying to do this. Um, although it is uh, a very special pastime, and one that is actually quite enlivening. Uh, one day, uh, Krishna got up with uh, his fellow cowherd uh, boyfriends, all the gopas. Uh, there were many hundreds of thousands of gopas, gopa friends of Krishna, and they decided to go to the forest. Uh, for some reason that day, Mother Rohini decided to keep Balaram uh, back. Apparently Balaram needed to be bathed. I'm not sure exactly why, but that's what it says. So, hmm? it was his birthday. Okay, so uh, uh, it does say, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur does say that he reluctantly stayed back. So I think he wanted to be playing with his cowherd boyfriend. So they went off to the forest uh, in a great festive mood. Every day in the spiritual world is a, is a riot of joy and laughter and love. So Krishna went off with his cowherd boyfriends and they packed, uh, their mothers packed wonderful lunches uh, for them. And it's described that when they would go to the forest, they would, uh, uh, although their mothers would decorate them with very beautiful ornaments, uh, bangles and jewels and so many different things, when they got to the forest, that's when the real decorations began. They would take twigs and leaves and feathers and flowers and decorate themselves so that they would look like very wonderful forest princes. And they began to play in the forest, doing different things, chasing the animals, uh, running across the ground, trying to keep up with the shadow of the birds as they flew overhead. Uh, they would imitate the different uh, forest animal sounds that they would hear, the cuckoos and the, uh, and the peacocks. 
sometimes they would see the frogs jumping into the ponds and the rivers. And right where the frogs would jump in, they would also jump in to try to uh, jump right into the center of the, of the circle. Um, sometimes, um, uh, in certain parts of the forest, they could call out different sounds. I, I believe one of the sounds was K, K. And um, the echo would come back. And when the echo would come back, they would rebuke the echo and give it a hard time. And sometimes they would even say things like, today you're going to die. <clears throat> things like that. So they were having great fun. Uh, they had fantastic lunches. Sometimes when I was a young devotee, we used to think about, especially when you're young and your stomach is always hungry, we would think, what Krishna is eating with his cowherd boyfriends? All these different special preparations made from milk and different sweets. So uh, sometimes they would do very naughty things like little boys do, and they would steal each other's lunches. And somebody would snatch the lunch and pass it on to another older cowherd boy, and then the other boy would go and just give me back my lunch, and they would pass it from one to another until that little boy would start crying, that little cowherd boy would cry, and then they would be merciful and give him back his lunch. So they were having this wonderful type of day uh, in the spirit of Balaram's uh, appearance day. And <clears throat> lo and behold, uh, yet another demon appears on the scene, Bakashura and Bhutana's brother. Very bad guy. <laughs> and he says, you know, what point is there in me living if I don't have any family? My beloved witch sister, she's gone, she's left the world. And my respected Bakashura brother, he's also left the world. So what I think I'm going to do, of course he did this under the uh, auspices of Kungsa. We all know he's the arch enemy. Uh, he decided to go to the forest and he said, I'm going to kill Krishna and Balaram. And I'm going to offer them as sesame in the fire of the remembrance uh, ceremony for my brother and sister. So he's a very nefarious fellow, <clears throat> and like his sister, uh, he can assume uh, different disguises, uh, but apparently, uh, unlike his sister, he could only assume uh, a form that was quite similar to his uh, natural propensity, which was to appear as a giant serpent, a giant snake, a python. And uh, when, when I mean giant, it was very giant. It was eight miles long. <clears throat> so you can just imagine the size of it. And it's described that uh, he looked like a, a mountain range, a very long, uh, curving mountain range. And his mouth uh, touched from the bottom to the top uh, of the sky. And his teeth uh, looked like mountains themselves. And his tongue looked like a highway going into a dark cave. Um, the cowherd boys came upon this uh, visage and they looked at him and although there was a very foul, fishy smell coming out of his mouth, <clears throat> they looked at him and they thought, this is great fun. They even thought it was kind of like a center park, like it was like an amusement park. <clears throat> Let's see what this is all about. Let's go in and enjoy. And so they began to actually uh, think, let's enter this dark cave. And uh, there was a moment that uh, passed their minds. So, well, maybe this isn't such a good idea. It, it could be another. Uh, it could be another demon. And then, with faith in Krishna, of course, they knew their hero would protect them in any case. So they said, Ah, it doesn't really matter. If we go in, Krishna will. Krishna will protect us. So the cowherd boys made their way into, um, uh, into the mouth of Agashura and uh, with a mood of adventure. And of course, uh, and I can't remember, does Krishna follow with the, he waits, doesn't he? Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, hum, you know, Agashura gobbles them all up. No? 
it waits all, until they're all uh, also in. Okay, thank you. It's been uh, a while since I read this pastime. Unfortunately, I have to admit that. Um, so then Krishna uh, goes inside, and uh, the cowherd boys are all uh, stuck in there. And if I remember correctly, uh, Krishna begins to expand himself. And by expanding himself, uh, he explodes out of the top of the head of Agasura. And uh, in that way, the soul, the, yeah, that's right. The, in that way, uh, the soul of Agasura uh, comes out the top of his head and it stays there until Krishna comes out. Thank you for the cue. <laughs> Until Krishna comes out, and then when Krishna comes out, uh, I believe everyone can see the soul, or is it just the demigods? Can the cowherd boys? Just the demigods can see the soul of Agashura uh, enter the body of Krishna. So this is my little um, summary of the pastime of, of Agashura, and uh, thank you very much. For Agasu took Krishna and all the cops and cowherd boys in his mouth. At once, demigods began to, to loudly, alas, uh, alas, oh, Krishna is killed, Krishna is killed. And this sound came to Brahma. And Brahma at once, came there and then he saw that anything very lighting coming from the head of Agasu and moving in the sky. And after some time Krishna when came out his mouth with cops and cows, oh, then he saw this. And that flashing light came into the feet of Krishna. Then he, oh, oh, Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead. Hmm? And how this Aghasu, to whom any yogi, a Brahmavadi, for thousands and millions of years, doing tapasya by their Suddhaman, pure mind. They cannot touch Krishna even. In their meditation, Krishna never comes. And this Sagasu took Krishna in his heart. Oh, how fortunate. He will have a very high class of gati. And then Krishna, he was there. And then he made up his mind. I want to see more some sweet past times of this Prabhu. But he has come from lotus. Lotus is jada. Inert. Inert. So he was also like that. In the meantime, Krishna with all Gualbal. He told us, oh, today is very late. Oh, here near this pond, very beautiful. We should sit here and take what our mother has sent. And then Krishna sat in the middle. And other boys, but at the, that day, but they were not there. They made round, thousands and thousands of rounds. And each one, each Gwalbal was saying that Krishna is with me, in front of me. Those who are back, those who are inside, those who are very far, all saw that Krishna is very nearer to me. And he is taking prasadam with us. In this way, he was very happy and taking prasadam. After what became? <coughs> oh.
ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजना शलाकय चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरवे नम सो अशील गुरुदेव टोल्ड नाउ द काउहर्ड बॉयज एंड कृष्णा वर सीटेड इन द फॉरेस्ट एंड दिस वेरी अमेजिंग सिचुएशन that every single cowherd boy who was seated around krishna and there were many many circles circling all the way around krishna each one of these cowherd boys thought oh krishna is directly facing me and he is directly uh, looking at my face and reciprocating with me personally as the cowherd boys were eating they were playing so many tricks on one another they were also sometimes taking a pakora and taking the inside out and then putting a jasmine flower inside the pakora and then handing it to another cowherd boy who would eat it and as soon as he ate it it would be taste bitter to him and he would make a bitter looking face in this way they were playing and very happily engaged in this pastime of taking their lunch with krishna there so at that time uh, they had already brought the calves uh to a a very beautiful area just nearby to where they were sitting which had very s- sweet and beautiful grasses lush green grasses for the calves to eat and very nice water in the river jamuna there and um then they suddenly noticed that the calves had uh wandered away and the cowherd boys and uh told to krishna oh the calves have gone krishna told the cowherd boys Oh don't worry don't worry uh, you should stay here and you should continue enjoying i will go and i will locate the calves and i will bring them all back here don't disturb yourselves just remain here very nicely sitting and enjoying so then krishna went off and he began to search for the calves but actually what had happened in the meantime lord brahma ji who wanted to see more wonderful pastimes of krishna and also he wanted to do some test to see krishna's mystic power so he actually played a trick and he took those calves by his own mystic power and he brought them into a cave and placed the calves in a unconscious state like sleeping condition by his mystic power and But then as krishna was looking here and there for the calves lord brahma also came where the cowherd boys were sitting and he also took the cowherd boys and made them under his mystic power and placed them in the cave also so krishna was looking here and there just like an ordinary uh, cowherd of this world and he could not find the calves and when he came back to see uh, the cowherd boys he also saw that they were not there but actually krishna understood because why uh krishna is sarvagyata sarvagyata means he is the absolute supreme personality of godhead he is the source of everything whole creation there is nothing within krishna's creation that he does not know at every single moment that is sarvagyata but also because of his playful pastimes as a like a human like child naravat lila oh he also sometimes appears to be mugdata where he doesn't know anything so krishna played like this up to this point where he did not see the cows and calves uh, calves and cowherd boys and then he realized oh yes this is brahma ji oh he has uh played a trick like this i will have to show him uh i will also have to express my powers to show brahma ji Uh, that he has made a big mistake and also at that time from krishna's perspective of being a little coward boy he thought oh oh mother yashoda he will she will become very upset if i return and there is no coward boys and calves so krishna at that moment he expanded his own self as each one of these coward boys every single detail of the coward boys was identical to the original cowherd boy their hair their their eyes their clothing 
uh, every single thing about them, their voices, were identical to those cowherd boys, but the only difference is they were Krishna himself. And also the young calves. He immediately expanded himself into all the calves, and all the calves looked identical to the original calves. And in this way, now Krishna began to return back to the uh, village of Vrindavan, uh, where all of the uh, uh, cowherd men and ladies were waiting for their sons and for the calves to return. All the cows were waiting for the calves to return. So now, when Krishna came back in this form, oh, he entered into the cowherd sheds as the calves. He ent entered into each one of the homes as the cowherd boys. And what occurred at that time? Oh, the parents, the mothers, they became so overwhelmed with love and affection for their little sons. Now they began to embrace them and kiss them. And now they began to uh, prepare them for the evening by massaging their uh, very beautiful bodies with fragrant oils and bathing them, decorating them. And in this way, they were able to directly serve Krishna and even feeding their own breast milk to little, their little sons, like as, as their little sons, and, but actually they're having the opportunity to directly feed Krishna their breast milk. And in the same way, also the cows, they began to give so much of their milk to these young calves. So, this was during this same time, Lord Brahma, because by Lord Brahma's calculation of time, uh, one, mo uh, one year of earthly time is equal to one moment uh, of his time. So Lord Brahma, after he had stolen the calves and, and, uh, co uh, and cowherd boys and put them in that cave, then he went to return back to his abode. So this was one year of the earthly time, but it was only a moment of his time. So when he returned back to his kingdom, who was there? Lord Brahma was there because Krishna had expanded himself as Lord Brahma. And so when Lord Brahma came to the entryway of his palace, the guards had been informed by the Krishna, Lord Brahma, that there will be an imposter who will be arriving here. And he's saying that he's Lord Brahma, but I am really Lord Brahma, you should beat him. So now the guards began to beat Lord Brahma. And he began to wonder, what is going on here? So during that time, then Lord Brahma also came back. But this whole year that had gone by during that time. Oh, Krishna, there was also one incident that took place. Gargarishi had given the advice to all the bridge bosses that this particular time was the most auspicious time for all the young Braja Gopis, the little girl Braja Gopis, to be betrothed to respective Gopas. And so, by the will of Krishna, and to satisfy the desire of the hearts of all the Braja Gopis. Actually, during that year, the Braja Gopis were betrothed uh, at the prior to marriage with Krishna. So actually, their desire of their heart to have Krishna as their husband was truly fulfilled because they were betrothed to, that, to all the cowherd boys who were actually Krishna himself. So now, uh, at the, just toward the end of this year, a few days before the end of this year, Lord Balaram was going with Krishna and the cowherd uh, boys and the calves. Who were, the calves were also one year old by now. And the mothers of the calves also had given birth to another calf in the meantime. Uh, and uh, usually when calves, cows give birth to a new calf, they become much more affectionate to that new calf than they were to the year old calf. So during this cowherding, when Balaram was there, one day they came to the uh, foot of a hill, and, and suddenly on the top of the hill, the cows saw the calves, which were actually Krishna. And they became overwhelmed with maternal affection. And the cows began running at top speed down the hill. And the cowherd men, who were also watching this, they ran after the cows. Uh, so when the cows came down to the bottom of the hill, they began licking the, the calves, who were the one-year-old calves. Uh, and they, and uh, then also the cowherd men, when they came down, they were a little bit upset because the cows had, had gone away. 
And when they saw their, their cowherd sons, oh, they also became so affectionate to them. They took the cowherd boys on their laps. They began smelling their heads affectionately. And Lord Balram was observing this. And he started to think, what is going on here? It appears that these cows are affectionate to these little cowherd boys in the exact same way that they are to Krishna himself. Because all the bridge bhasis love Krishna more than they love anyone, even their own selves. So then he also observed all oh, these cows. They're normally not so affectionate to the one-year-old calves, but here in this case, they're so much affectionate to them. And now Lord Balaram began to think. And suddenly he realized, yes, ah, now I see. This is the mystic power of my younger brother Krishna. Huh? Only even Lord Balaram, who is the immediate expansion of Krishna, he is also Supreme Personality of Godhead, all-knowing. But when Krishna, who is Ekala Ishwar Krishna, that means he's the only one Supreme Absolute Lord, and all others are his servants, including Balaram, if Krishna wants to perform a pastime, then even Balaram may not be able to understand. But at this point, Krishna allowed Balaram to also see and understand that, oh, Krishna, you have become all these calves and cowherd boys. So now, uh, when Lord Brahma finally returned back from his abode, which... He, as asked, I, he asked from Krishna. He asked from Krishna. From Krishna. Yes. Why you have done so? So then Krishna began to explain to him uh, that Brahma wanted yes. and also all the cows and cops, cows, they wanted to, that, that I should be cow and all as a gopi wanted to, that uh, I should be their son yes. and all gopis wanted that Krishna should be my most beloved for all reason I have done. So Krishna explained all these things to Balaram, and now Lord Brahma returned back. So when Lord Brahma went to the cave where he had put the cow herd boys and the calves, and he went to examine to see, because actually he was starting to feel, hmm, maybe I've done something wrong, because he saw himself <laughs> in Brahma Lok. So now he came back and he thought, I must have made some mistake here. And when he saw that in the cave, the cowherd boys, they were still sleeping there. Uh, what he had done mistake? What mistake was that? Okay. So when he, when he came back and he saw that the, the cowherd boys they, and calves, they were still sleeping there, then he began to realize, oh... I have made a mistake, I have made an offense against my Lord and Master, uh, Lord Krishna. Uh, he is the absolute supreme power. I am very tiny, my power in comparison to him. And uh, then he went and he saw that the cowherd boys and the calves, they were also playing and grazing in the forest. He saw them there, and then he went back to the cave again, and he saw that they were also in the cave. And, so, and then he simultaneously looked with his heads in both directions, and he saw that they're both in both directions simultaneously. And this especially disturbed him, because now he knew for sure that some great power had defeated his, of Lord Krishna's. And then, <clears throat> when he looked at all the cowherd boys and all the calves, and saw that immediately he was granted this vision that the cowherd boys assumed these most amazing, beautiful Vishnu forms, each one of the hundreds and oh, thousands... in Krishna form. After that Vishnu. First, uh, Krishna. first in Krishna form. Oh. They, they manifested Krishna's own form uh, with his beautiful turban and holding his, his cowherd stick and dressed like cowherd boy. And then after that, those, Vish those Krishna forms, uh, they turned into Vishnu forms. All of the cowherd boys, all of the calves, and all of the paraphernalia that, were hold, that they were holding in their hands, they all assumed these uh, uh, effulgent Vishnu forms with crowns on their heads, beautifully decorated with golden uh, ornaments, and holding in their four arms, conch shell, discus, lotus, and club. And so now Lord Brahma 
he became totally, totally astonished. And he began to realize uh, that he had made a serious mistake offending his Lord and Master, trying to test his mystic power. So, tell the Brahma oh, yeah. so then, Lord Brahma now realized that it was his time uh, to eat humble pie. <laughs> so he came and he found Krishna uh, in a cow in a forest you, grove. Brahma stall? He found Krishna stall. standing. Better stall. Thank you. Thank you, John. After that. Brahma has thought. Uh, <coughs> Brahma has done some mistake. And what was that mistake? He knew that Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead. Simply he would have prayed, O oh Krishna, I want to see your more sweet pastimes. That was enough. If he had done in mind even, then Krishna knew. You. And he had done, he would have done. But he used his maya, that I am intelligent, by maya I will... Huh? Hmm. I will cover the gyan of Krishna and then I will see what he is doing. But his fault was that he should pray himself in heart that, O oh, Krishna, I want to see your most sweet past. That was an all. And for this, he took his all cowherd boys and cups. This was also a kind of offense. And he put in a cave for so many days, one year. So that was his fault. Now, what he just took it? Om Kyana Timurandhasya Kyana Dhanasla Kaya Chakshun Maritam Jena Thasvay Sri Gurave Nama First of all, I offer my Sastang Dhanavat Puspanjali at the Lord's feet of Asmade Parmarada Tama Guru Pada Padma Om Vishnu Pada Ashtotra Sata Sisimad Rupanu Gachari Varya Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam at the lotus feet of my Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and the Vaishnavis. So, we have heard from Pujapad Bhaktivedanta Padmanam Maharaj how Lord Brahma, he realized that he had made a mistake. And when he saw, looked upon the coward boys, each one of them assumed a Krishna's form and then a four-armed form of Vishnu. And each Vishnu form was brilliantly effulgent like millions of suns. And around each form, all the elements personified, earth, water, air, ether, all the demi various forms of demigods, and every living creature in the universe in all different species, from the demigods even down to the small blades of grass, they surrounded each Vishnu form and all were doing kirtan. It was astonishing. Lord Brahma was overpowered by the vast, immense opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, which is beyond his imagination. And as he was looking and the effulgence became greater and greater, he could not even uh, behold this form. And he could not speak. All he thought in his mind was, Kim Idam, what is this? Then he could not even look. He was overpowered and he closed his eyes. Hmm? But, but then Lord Brahma, being overwhelmed by the immense power and opulence of Sri Krishna, when he opened his eyes and rubbed his eyes, <laughs> he looked and saw that all this immense display of opulence had been withdrawn and he saw the beauty of Vrindavan. How sweet 
the forest of Vrindavan, very peaceful, full of fragrant flowers and cool breezes. And he looked and saw this one cowherd boy, Krishna, with the food in his left hand. And he was wondering, here and there, with tears in his eyes, looking for his friends. Hey, Subal, Sridhar, Madhumangal, where are you? Just as he had been doing one year before, when Brahma had stolen his friends and calves. So, all the Shastras say, Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now one should inquire about the Absolute Truth. But in Vrindavan, the Absolute Truth is inquiring about his devotee. Hey Subal, where are you? Sridham, where are you? Seeing this, Lord Brahma became ashamed. So ashamed. And he came down from his mm, swan carrier and fell at the feet of Krishna, giving Dandavat Pranam again and again, tears flowing profusely from his eight eyes. And with a choked voice and trembling, with folded hands, he began to utter prayers glorifying Sri Krishna. No medyate pravapase tadidambaraya gunjava tanksa paripichala sanmukaya vanyasraje kavalaveta vishanavainam lakshmastriye mridupate pashupangajaya. He said, Oh my Lord, no medyate pravapase. You are the only object of worship for all living entities in the world. You are standing before me with your small lotus feet as a cowherd boy, which are marked with beautiful signs. Your complexion is like a fresh rain cloud, and you are wearing a pitambar, a yellow shawl, which shines like lightning on your body. You are not decorated with gold and jewels, like the, all the forms of Vishnu, but in this original form, you are decorated with what? Gunja berries, earrings made of gunja berries from the forest. And even though you are the reservoir of all knowledge, you know everything, it seems that you have no education at all because you're walking around with food in your left hand. As you know, you don't eat with the left hand. So, but Krishna, he had been eating with his left hand and he was wondering, and he has the rice and yogurt and fruit dripping through the fingers of his left hand while he's looking for his friends. So, Lord Brahma, he said, that you have a flute and a stick for um, controlling the cows tucked inside your belt. So you really, you are playing like a very ordinary cowherd boy. And you are Pashupango Jaya. You are really the son of Nanda Maharaj. Before Srila Gurudev was raising this point. Is Krishna the son of Vasudevan Devaki or Nanda and Yashoda? So partly he's the son of Vasudevan Devaki. But in his original form, here, Lord Brahma, our Adi Guru, who is an authority and Mahajan, is saying, Pashupanga Jaya, really you are the son of the Pashupa, those who protect cows, the cowherd uh, couple, Nanda and Yashoda. So then, Lord Brahmaji, he said, even if the uh, rishis or scientists, they could count every grain of sand, in the universe. If they could count all the stars in the sky, still they could not count your astonishing, wonderful, unlimited qualities. There are those who cultivate knowledge of impersonal Brahman, but all of their cultivation of knowledge is a complete waste of time. It is like husking husk. If you have rice paddy and you husk it, then the, the rice comes out from the husk. But if you begin with the husk, and you beat it, then what will come out? Nothing at all. So all the endeavors of those who are cultivating impersonal knowledge, who have no devotion to you, all of their hard endeavors are like husking, just hard work for nothing. And Lord Brahma, he prayed, Jnane praya samuda pasyana mantam eva jivanti sanmukaritam pavadiya vatam stane stitam srutigatam tanuman vanobiya Ye praya sojita di chopya sitai strilokyam. Lord Brahmaji said, Jnane prayasam. The attempt to attain knowledge. Udapastya. One should give up the attempt to attain knowledge. This jnana does not refer only to the cultivation of impersonal knowledge. 
But Lord Brahma realized one should, there is no need to cultivate knowledge even of the opulence of Sri Krishna. Because it's not possible to understand his opulence. It's so vast. Jnane Priyasam Udapasya. Give up the idea of trying to understand the opulence of Krishna. Namanta Eva. And just give obeisances. Jivanti Sanmukaritam Bhavadiya Vartam. And give respect to the Bhavadiya Vartam. The discussions of your Nam, Rup, Gun, and Lila. Even Jnane Priyasam Udapasya. Krishna has so many opulence. Even you should give up all this. By that, if the appliance is there, they cannot enjoy Madhur, Madhur Bhav. So give up all these things and hear this. And Jivanti San Mukaritam Bhavadiya Vartam, dedicate your life completely to hearing the Harikata from the lips of the Sat, the pure devotees, the transcendental sadhus who have realized your pure devotional service and giving obeisances to the speaker of Harikata, to the hearers of Harikata, to the, to the organizers of Harikata, to the place where the Harikata takes place. Everything in connection with Harikata, just bow down to that and, and no need to change anything in your life. Whatever ashram you're in, you can stay there. Or Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad explains, stane stha, means stay where you are. Whatever position you have in life, you can be there. But also stane stha means stay in that place where the pure Vaishnavas are telling Harikata. Try to stay in their association. Stane stha sruti gatam tanuvam manobir. And that person who will do this by his body, mind and words. He will conquer the body, mind and words of Sri Krishna. Now Krishna is called Ajita. He cannot be conquered by anyone. But here Lord Brahma is saying by this simple process of hearing Harikata from qualified Guru and Vaishnavas, Krishna, he becomes conquered. That means the potential of hearing Harikata is that it awakens Krishna Prem within the heart. Because Prem is the only thing that can conquer Ajit, the unconquerable, Sri Krishna. So then, Lord Brahma, he remembered. He was thinking that these residents of Vrindavan, these coward boys, these calves and all, how great they are. I cannot be compared to them. And he cried, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Prajokasam, Yanmita Paramanandam, Puna Brahma Sanartanam. Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam. How astonishing it is. How astonishing is the Bhagya, the fortune of all the residents of Vrindavan, headed by Nanda Maharaj. Why? Because those who are fortunate, they try to search out the Brahma, the absolute truth, the Sanatan, eternal reality. But that very eternal Purna Brahma, complete supreme reality, has Yanmitam Paramanandam. He who is the unlimited ocean of Ananda, he has become the friend, intimate friend and family member of all of these wonderful residents of Vrindavan. And therefore, Lord Brahma said, I pray, Tadburi Bhagyam, he a Janma Kimapyatavyam. Yad go kule pikatamangri rajo bisheikam, yad jivitam tu bhagavan mukundas, yad yapya shutibe mrigameva. He said, It would be a matter of great fortune for me if I could take birth here. Tadburi bhagyam, great fortune. Here, kimapya tavyam, if I could take birth here. Where? That means on the western side of the Jamuna, the Vrindavan side. But Brahmaji thought, I'm not qualified to take birth here. So then he thought, perhaps I could take birth on the other side of the Jamuna river, on the eastern side, that is Gokul. Yat Gokule pikatamangri rajo bishekam. If I could take birth in any species of life, then I would be very fortunate. What to speak of moving living entities, even if I could take birth as a stone in 
the, um, in Go, uh, Goku, then this would be a great matter of great fortune for me. What kind of stone? When the lower caste um, sweepers who clean the drains and clean up the stool, when they come home from cleaning, then before they go inside their house, they keep a stone by the door and they scrape their feet to clean their feet on the stone before going in the house. So Lord Brahma, the original being of the universe who has created everything, who is the topmost of all the demigods, he prayed, oh, I would be lucky if I could be that stone outside the house of a sweeper, so when she cleans her feet before going in, I can get the foot dust of a bridge bassi. And by being touched by the foot dust of a bridge bassi, then I may understand something about devotion. I, from my four mouths, four Vedas have come, but those four Vedas, they are still searching after this wonderful coward boy, Sri Krishna. So as Lord Brahma, he was offering all of these prayers to Sri Krishna, how was Sri Krishna? Hmm? Or not even looking at him. He wouldn't even look at the Brahma. Hmm? And the friends of Sri Krishna, also they came there and they were laughing. Oh, Chauma, Chauma, who is this four-faced person? Hmm? And Brahma realized that he was not in his element. He was out of place in Vrindavan. So he gave Pranam and did Parakrama of Sri Krishna and got on the, his um, swan carrier and returned to Brahma Lok, having learned a good lesson that one should not try to understand Sri Krishna, his name, form, qualities and pastimes by one's own intelligence. As long as one has Vidya Buddhi, Vidya Buddhi means the idea that I know something, I understand something, I have knowledge, then one cannot realize anything. So the Vaishnava, he prays, Oh my Lord, I don't know anything. Oh Gurudev, I have no knowledge at all. Be merciful to me and kindly reveal yourself in my heart. When <laughs> Brahma saw the infin infinite glory of Krishna, then <coughs> he told Jananta Ev Jananta, Na me bhaktvaknu, bhapso vachu, vaibhavanta vachara. Oh Krishna, those who are telling that I know Krishna, but I think that they are foolish. They don't know. Even myself, I don't know his glory. His glory is, oh, Ananta, infinitive, infinitive. Hmm? So, after that, all the cowherd boys returned with Krishna to, to Brajat, their houses. And began to tell that, oh, mother, oh, father, today, Krishna and we all went in the mouth of a big, big poison. And we were like dying. But anyhow, Krishna saved us. Hmm? Here, Sukadeva Goswami told that Aghasur was killed in his Paugand uh, Balya at the age of five. But one year she took, Brahma has told him, and he told them next year, after one year, they returned to home and began to tell, oh, he was in the mouth of death, in the mouth of python. So how it became, then Sukhdev Goswami explained everything, that Brahma has told him, and thus one year it was that. <coughs> then Krishna again did so many pastimes. Oh, Dhenukasu. Oh, my God.
Ganati Mirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Militam Jaina Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha Vanchakalpatu Rupi Stakripasan Vivacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha So first before speaking I offer my most respectful basis thousands and thousands of times Unto the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru Nitya Lila Pavishnu Vishnu Pad as Dr. Sota Shishimad Srila Gorgavan Goswami Maharaj. Again, I offer my most respectful obeisances thousands and thousands of times unto the lotus feet of my Sanyasa and Shiksha Guru Om Vishnu Pad as Dr. Sota Shishimad Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And again, my most respectful obeisances innumerable times unto the lotus feet of my Paramguri days Nitya Lila Pavishnu Vishnu Pad as Dr. Sota Shishimad Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada and the Tulila of Vishnu of Vishnu Pad. As to the Rasata Shishma Shri Bhakti Pagan Kesha Gosmaraj, unto all three Dandi, um, Sanyasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. So, now Krishna, he's entered into his um, Poganda age, Krishna and Balaram. At this time, in the autumn season, the uh, Krishna and Balaram, now they're allowed to go and take care of the cows. Previously, they're taking care of the calves going into um, the forest. But at this age, then another gopastami um, occurs when they are now mature enough to go with the cows. Um, also, in the 10th canto, Srila Shukadeva Goswami has explained this very, very beautiful scene. From this chapter, I do not know the verses. So if you can allow me, I can just quote very briefly from another chapter. Itam sarat swacha jalam, padmaka sugandina, nyavisha devatam batam, sagogo palako chita, itam sarat swacha jalam. That at this time, in the autumn season in Vrindavan, the waters, they're flowing very, very sweetly. Yamuna, Manisi Ganga, Kushum Sarova, itam sarat swacha jalam, padmaka sugandina. And the lotus flowers, they're emitting a very, very sweet, sweet fragrance. In this very, very beautiful, sweet scene, Krishna, Balaram, Stoke Krishna, um, Madhu Mangal, the cows, calves, they're entering into Vrindavan forest. Srila Shukadev Goswami further explains, Kushumita Vanaraji, Shushmihi Bringa, Dvija Kula Gusta Sara Sarin Mahidram, Madhupati Avagaya Charayan Nagaha, Sahapashu Palabala Chukujavehinum Kushu Mita Vanaraji Shushmi Hibringa. As they're entering into Vrindavan forest, Shamsun Krishna he takes his flute from his sash and he starts to play very, very sweetly. The birds, especially the parrots that are flying here and there, they're singing very, very, very sweetly. The bees, they're also humming. The they said Benubi. No, but I'm going to bring it here. No. No, no. I'm going to bring it right. <laughs> no, no. Okay, it I, will I, come afterwards. Okay. No, I will not go. I will not go to. But also, there's description of Raj here. So, <laughs> the um, the bees are humming very, very sweetly, and the trees. They're bowing down at the lotus feet of Krishna and they're offering their, flute, their fruits and flowers. This time, Krishna being received by the residents of Vrindavan in such a sweet, very, very sweet way, then he turns to his brother Balaram and he deflects this um, loving relationship which is coming from the bridge brassies in the forest of Vrindavan and he says, oh, just see how they're relating with you so sweetly that the female deer, the doe, they're looking at you with very, very sweet eyes, just like the gopis. That the peacock, upon seeing you coming into the forest of Vrindavan, they're dancing so sweetly and jubilantly. At that time, Krishna also is playing his flute, and the peacock, they're dancing even more jubilantly. The cows, the calves, they're running and they're jumping, and um, so playful. In this way, Krishna, Balaram, along with the cowherd boys, the cows, the calves, they're entering into the forest of Vrindavan as the trees, with their very beautiful flowers, are showering 
um, on the heads of Crystal Bar of the Cowherd Boys and Cows and Calves and making a very beautiful carpet. As they go into the forest of Vrindavan, then they um, go by oh, a very nice... One thing, you should remember that uh, in Bhagavatam, Sukhdev Goswami has explained six ritu Mm. Like Basanta Ritu, after that, Basanta, eh? ah, summer, then Barsha, Barsha means raining season, and after that, eh? autumn, and then after that, Hemanta, then Sisi, then Basanta. Now he at the, at the time of Dhanukasuri, it was Grishmaka, it was summer. And at that time, O oh, Talka and Tal are now ripened at that time. So, you should come as in Srimad Bhagavat has told, not like this. <laughs> huh? In rainy season. And this is Saratka. Anyhow, we should go now. We can so, at this time, um, Balaram, he and the cowherd boys, they stop to take rest. Baladev, he puts, he lays his head on the lap of one of the cowherd boys. And then Krishna, he goes and sits by his feet and he starts to massage his feet very, very nicely. After some time, the boys, they get up and they start to play again. And then after...